Hi, it is Dwyer of DwyerCrime.blog, a free site. It is Sunday, July the 18th, 2021. Let's follow up on an earlier video that's still here on YouTube, that's still getting views, on the case involving Darley Rotier, who, of course, is in prison for murdering her five-year-old son, Damon, and her six-year-old son, Devin. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now here, I just want to focus on one part of the case in this video because I believe it shows guilt. Right? I know many of you are divided on this case. I have noticed that I've gotten some recent comments uh, to the earlier video where people are questioning whether or not Darley did the crime. I understand, too, that there are websites here online devoted to proving Darley's innocence. Many people believe Darley got railroaded, right? Understand many others, like me, believe that she committed the double homicide. Well, let me just point out that covering up a murder or two is very difficult for most people, right? You have to consider all contingencies. Any hole in your story can sink the entire story, right? Some assumptions in real time that you have as you're doing the crime, as you're trying to cover up the crime, may prove to be false, right? Some different facts might emerge in the course of covering up the crime that you didn't anticipate. Now, with regard to this case, just understand that we know the time at which Darley Rotier calls the police, the Emergency Communications Center, 911, to alert them of the fact that an intruder, her story, an intruder, has just assaulted her kids. That call took place on June the 6th, 1996, at 2.31 a.m. We know when the call was made. We know the police dispatcher who handled the call. That dispatcher was Doris Trammell. Now, I believe Darley did not expect the police to be able to show up at her house within three minutes of the 911 call. That's when Rolette police officer David Waddell enters her home, right? Within three minutes of the call made at 2.31 a.m. Now, Darley is clutching a bloody towel at her neck, and she's screaming at Officer Waddell that the intruder might still be in the home, right? She further tells Waddell that the intruder ran out the garage. Now understand, this news is so jarring that Waddell, of course, looks in the garage and it's dark. He makes a decision, given that the intruder might still be in the garage, he makes a decision to wait for another police officer. So then, of course, moments later, Sergeant Matthew Walling shows up. So now you're not dealing with 
one cop's recollection of the events. You actually have two cops at Darley Rotier's home, right, trying to figure out whether an intruder is in the garage. So, of course, these officers find a light switch, don't find anyone in the garage. So they look in the backyard, they don't spot anyone in the backyard, right? They do see an open window in the garage, right? But they don't see anyone in the backyard. Now, understand, all of this is happening very fast. You could imagine how frantic the scene is. The cops show up. They're hearing there might be an intruder in the garage. They go look in the garage. They look in the backyard where the intruder might have gone. Now, I don't expect, I don't believe that Darley Rotier thought that the cops would get to her backyard as fast as they did, especially given that the call comes in the middle of the night, not during normal working hours, right? She makes the call at 2.31 in the morning. Would it surprise you to learn that both of these police officers recall looking in the backyard and the backyard being dark, as you could imagine, right? Neither cop remembers lights being on in the backyard. The backyard is dark, right? This intruder has been able to leave the garage, go through the backyard, off into the night, even though the cops got there quickly. Right? The intruder obviously was able to leave quickly if there was an intruder. Right, Cops are there within three minutes. Let's say that the first cop, looking at the darkness of the garage, waits a minute for the second cop, who then, with him, looks through the garage, no one's there, after they find the light switch, then looks in the backyard. There are no lights on in the backyard. Well, understand, that's a huge hole in Darley's story because the backyard had a Redwood Spa that had a motion sensor light. Testing would show that the motion sensor light, when activated, stayed on for 18 minutes. 18 minutes, right? Understand, that means that if this intruder ran through the backyard at 2.30, let's say the minute before Darley calls 911 at 2.31, this light would have stayed on until 2.48. The cops got there in three minutes. Right? None of the police officers saw the backyard light on when they arrived. Right? The two cops who look in the backyard both recall it being dark. Those are the kind of memories that you would remember. Right? You show up, there's panic, a woman is holding a bloody towel at her neck. She says the intruder ran toward the garage. The cops go to the garage. They find the light. They look in the backyard where the perp would run out. And of course, it's dark. Had Darley told the truth, if Darley's story was correct, the backyard light would have been on 
when the cops arrived. At least one of the cops would have recalled looking in the backyard and seeing the motion sensor light on. Right, folks? That motion sensor light was not on because no unknown intruder went through that backyard as Darley claimed. Right? Understand, Darley's story has other problems, but this one is foundational. I believe when Darley makes the phone call to the police, she wasn't expecting the first cop to arrive within three minutes. She wasn't expecting the cops to get to their backyard as quickly as they did. Right? Likely four to six minutes after she made her call. That backyard light should have been on for a full 10 minutes past that. There shouldn't be any question of its activation. Cops should have recognized that the motion light was on, if it was on. So as Darley staged the crime scene, right, and the crime scene has some problems, doesn't it? Right, I refer you to my earlier video. As Darley stages the crime scene, right, cuts the window mesh and does other things, what she forgot to do was to conform her story to include the motion light in the backyard where she claimed the intruder ran through, right? Runs through the garage, the garage empties out into the backyard. Darley thought of a lot of things. She did not think, in my opinion, of that backyard motion light. It was not on. So let me point out that I've been on some sites that are claiming Darley is innocent. And they're making the argument that things happened so fast that night that the police did not have out their pads as they were doing things like looking for the intruder. Right, folks, let's be real here. This was an emergency situation. The cops show up, two young boys are dead. Their mother is holding a bloody towel at her neck. She's claiming that an intruder just ran out the house. So the cops, of course, go looking for the intruder. I don't believe all of the cops magically forgot that the background, the backyard motion light was on. The cops would remember that. Understand, these are the same guys who looked for the light switch in the garage. The garage was so dark, right? There's no light on in the backyard because folks, the intruder never ran through the backyard. In my opinion, there was no intruder. That's how I see it. This loose thread unravels Darley's entire story. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. If you have an explanation as to why the motion light wasn't activated in the backyard, please leave those observations in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.